we're on. We're here, it's March 22nd, and we're starting the Public Works and Finance Committee meeting. And we want to welcome everybody back from spring break who was gone for the last week and to start our agenda today. Ann Zabala is on the phone, uh, on Zoom, and Art and I are here. And there are six people in the audience, and um, Tyler is ready to go after we approve the minutes. Um, any issues with respect to the minutes? Ann? No, they look good. Thumbs up. Hey, minute, minutes are approved unanimously. Okay, so the second topic is um, gonna, Tyler's ready to go. He's up there and ready. <laughs> go for it, Tyler, buddy. I'm champing at the bit, Maureen. I'm excited about this. Well, good. <laughs> then I hope Let we all agree. Do a quick screen share here. You were easily entertained, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> well, he entertains us too, so it works. Yeah, I've, I've written this entire presentation in iambic pentameter. I think you're really going to appreciate it. Oh, gosh. I am not messing around. We all want to walk out here smiling. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Anne, you can see that all right? Yes, looks great. All right. So what we have before you today is uh, a proposal for a monitoring well that the Idaho Division of Water Resources is hoping to drill uh, on our Mountain View Park property. Um, and just so for a little context for this project, uh, if you look on the screen here, I've got identified, I'm gonna turn this on. There we go. Um, so this, this is the area that, that we're looking at. Um, and this is the area of interest for the monitoring well, specifically for IDWR. So just a little bit of context. We have two primary aquifers that we draw all of our drinking water from here in Moscow. We have the shallow aquifer, which is called the Wanapum aquifer, and the deeper aquifer called the Grand Ronde aquifer. Um, there is a growing body of evidence that these, these two different aquifers are more interconnected than was originally thought. Um, but the long and short of it is the vast majority of the water is pulled from the lower aquifer. Now, Moscow is the only major pumping entity. And when I say major pumping entity, I'm talking about Moscow, Pullman, the University of Idaho, and Washington State University. Those are the four major pumpers in our basin. And Moscow is the only of those entities that pulls water from the upper, upper aquifer. Our wells two and three, which are located here downtown uh, by the water building on the, the corner of A Street and Main Street, actually pump from the Wanapum. Um, but the Grand Ronde is where most of the other, most, most of our water comes from, is pumped from that, and then all of the other pumping entities pull from the Grand Ronde aquifer. Um, and as you can see here, these are, these are some of the, the Grand Ronde wells, the current existing Grand Ronde wells that we have data and long-term data on. So you have well six in Moscow, which is over by the city shop. We have wells, uh, wells eight and nine in Moscow. Um, we also have the U of I's wells three and four. We have the new Moscow well 10, and there's an IDWR monitoring well that sits up here just a little bit north of town. Um, the, the reason that IDWR is really interested in drilling another monitoring well in this area is that you can see the borders, what are the assumed borders. This, this, the, this solid line is the assumed border of the upper aquifer, the Wanapum aquifer, and this dotted line is the assumed border of the lower aquifer, the Grand Ronde aquifer. And there's long been curiosity and speculation and a lot of research done to try and figure out where and how these aquifers recharge. It's terribly important as we look at our long-term water supply and the sustainability of our, of our water supply. And there's a, growing, there's, there's, there's a growing amount of research that shows that it's likely to come in this direction, that, that along Moscow Mountain, um, up to the north and east of town is where we're likely to see recharge. And so they're very interested in a, in a lot of reasons in having a well on this part of town to monitor the water levels in that northeast quadrant to be able to determine, there, there's, there's a lot of really cool new research. One of the research projects that's going on with PBAC right now, they look at, they look at different, uh, different elements in the water and by, by, the, by the, the, the uh, occurrence of those elements in the water, they're able to determine how old the water is, where it comes from. There's just a lot of really neat research that, that we're able to do now. And so this will be a, a very beneficial thing and we really appreciate IDWR. You know, I, IDWR ultimately is responsible for water resources statewide. And they've shown a particular interest in our basin as they should. It's, it's an area where we've known 
we need to be doing something with water resources for decades and decades and the city is actively working on pursuing that in coordination and cooperation with the Palouse Basin Aquifer Committee. And so uh, IWR had some funds available and they thought this would be a great use of those funds. Um, they are funds that they have in this budget year and so they need to get them in expended in this budget year. And so we've, we're trying to help them accommodate that process. And so this, this location at Mountain View Park is within their area of interest in that Northeast Quadrant. This more specifically will show you where we're placing the monitoring well or where it's proposed to be placed. This is, the, this is Mountain View Park here. This is where Paradise Creek comes by. The, the main parking lot comes right here. This is the basketball court right there. And so this is the, the restrooms are right here beneath those trees. And so you, the, where that triangle is, it's, it's over to the west of the restrooms is where it's proposed to be put. So this, this monitoring well would be a deep well monitoring or deep aquifer monitoring well. Their, their, their proposal is to drill all the way down to the granite, to the bedrock is where they want to get to. Based on the research that John Bush did back in 2017, the, it's believed to be between 800 and 1,200 feet to bedrock at this, at this location. And so what they would do is they would drill a well. It would, it, it'll, have, it'll be a, an 8-inch well, but the, for the initial 650 feet, they would drill a 12-inch hole because they want to seal this off. So they want to make sure they seal off the upper aquifer because we really want to see what the lower aquifer is doing. So they'll drill down to 650 feet, seal that area off. There'll be a steel casing in there and then continue with an eight inch, in di eight inch diameter borehole until they hit bedrock, which again is assumed to be between 800 and 1200 feet deep. Um, so uh, through that process, there's, there's a lot of really beneficial um, things that'll happen for both the area for the Palouse Basin in general, but also for the city of Moscow. Um, IDIWR, through the process, they'll, they'll collect samples of the drill cuttings, and those, those drill cuttings are just massively valuable. It really helps tell the story. It's how we know where these layers of the aquifer are. It's how we know what, you know what might be separating what and how is it going to behave. And so having this kind of information that we haven't had from this quadrant of town will be really important. Um, and so they'll, they'll keep um, drill cuttings and every 10 feet they'll collect drill cuttings or every time there's a change um, in the geology. So if they see a change in geology, they, they grab a sample or every 10 feet they grab a sample and, and they keep a representative subset of those samples. Um, and one of those subsets will be, IDWR will keep, the other one will be delivered to PBAC. And so we'll have the actual physical samples that we can then have people do research on, take a look at. Um, and then they'll also generate a report, a comprehensive report. Uh, Moscow is that, you know, this is on a city property um, and this is a well in, in a city property and a decent diameter well. And so depending on, you know, what the water, what the, what the, the flows look like coming out of this well and the quality of the water coming out of this well, there is the potential that down the, down the line, this could be something that we would consider using within, within our water network, whether that be, there's already a well on this site, it's used for irrigation at Mountain View Park, but it might be something down the road that's used for that. Um, there, there are even things that we could do to, you know, pump a small amount and inject into the system along with chlorine. And so the long-term potential of this, it's beneficial for us to have this and have it on city property as it could be something that could have a positive impact on the city's infrastructure as we look to the future. So what we're proposing, we've, we've, got, a, we've got an agreement that uh, was drafted. It's gone back and forth between our legal department and IDWR's legal department. Uh, I think we're really close to an agreement on that, just working out some of the final language. And so we plan to have that specific language available prior to council meeting next week. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're proposing that we move ahead with this and enter into an agreement with IDWR to allow them to drill this monitoring well on the Mountain View Park site. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. All right, any questions? Uh, is there the possibility of extracting more information about the interaction between the Wanapum and Grand Ronde aquifers out of this with a potential idea towards the one of the proposals that's kicked around by treating and injecting and uh, sort of get a better picture of that? 
Yeah, Art, I, I think definitely, you know, the, the tailings are massively helpful in that. You know, as we look at the, the thickness of the layers and what the layers are comprised of, especially as we get up into this northeast quadrant where the recharge is likely happening, um, it, it'll be very informative toward, toward that end. And so, yeah, we're, we're very much interested in seeing what comes out of the hole. Yeah. Ian, any, any more questions, Art? No question, just the comment that it's heaps and heaps of data that we don't have already that can mm -hmm. really inform both PBAC and the city's plans to access other water sources for the long term. And personally, I'm happy to help IDWR spend their money. Yeah, I, again, yeah, we're, we're grateful that, that they're thinking of us and we think they think that this is a worthwhile place to do it. Ann, do you have any questions? Yeah, that's pretty great. I did. So I missed this. Which aquifer does the existing one monitor and which one will this monitor? So we have, we have multiple monitoring wells throughout the system, Anne, and we monitor the levels in our existing wells. So wells two and three are the only two Wanapum wells that the city of Moscow has, and they're the, only, they're the only two Wanapum wells that any of the major pumping entities have. But there are a number of shallow wells that we can get data from throughout the county because you know even a lot of the private wells, most of the private wells are all in the Wanapum, in the shallow aquifer. And so uh, this, this taps the deeper Grand Ronde aquifer, but it's in an, in an area where we don't have other monitoring. So that northeast quadrant that we're very interested in, we do not have any other monitoring wells in the Grand Ronde in that northeast sector. Gotcha, so both. The answer is the Grand Ronde for both. Sorry, Ian, what was that? The, um, so what you just said, Tyler, the Grand Ron is the answer for which one um, both are monitoring. I, when you say both, Ann, I'm not sure I, I know what- IDWR which. specifically. The other one, this one right here, this is IDWR4. Yeah. Yes, that's also a Grand Ron, yep. Thank you. And then um, did you say, so is recharge one of the things that's one of the considerations being monitored or, or no for this proposed location? Recharge is one of the things that they really want to determine out of this location to try and determine how those how the two aquifers are interacting and and specifically if and how much recharge is coming through this area for the Grand Ronde aquifer. Gotcha. And then um, just out of curiosity, why is there a number four associated with the other IDWR? Uh, that's just IDWR's numbering system. And so they have they have uh, an independent numbering system from anything that the city of Moscow does how with, with, that they use to number their wells throughout the state. And so uh, I, I believe they separate their numbering system by basin. Um, and so that's just that's the number that they're using. Great, thank you. Yeah, those are all my questions. I'm really excited about this. I think it'll be nice to have that as Art mentioned too for both PBAC and for the city. Okay, so what is it that the IDWR four is going to tells us that we're not that we're going to get additional stuff out of the one at Mountain View. So that's a good question, Maureen. So this, as, as you'll see, the IDWR four is kind of smack dab in the middle of the of the basin. Right. And so th th we with with the layers that we have with the geology of the middle of the basin, we're not getting recharge in the middle of the basin. That's that's not where it's happening. We have way too thick of clay layers, and so it's just really impermeable. It's not happening there. And so the recharge is, is likely coming from here, off, off Moscow Mountain, following kind of the profile of the mountain through some of the gravel areas, following that, that granite bedrock and, and flowing into the basin this way. And so that's why we're really specifically interested in this particular area because we, we feel like if there is any significant recharge coming to the basin, that's likely the path that it's following. Okay, then one of the two other questions is, is there lots of upsides to this? I mean, it's pretty exciting, a lot of data. Is there any downsides? Uh, one of the things that we did uh, was a site review with engineering, the parks department, and with our water folks. I mean, an obvious downside would be if this would cause problems for our parks department, if it was going to be somewhere that it was in the way, difficult to maintain, um, or if it was an area where in order to access the site to drill the well, they were going to do extensive damage to the park. Um, we have in our agreement uh, stipulations that they'll, they'll repair any damage that's done. This is in a spot that's particularly easy to access. We don't have to close the park. We don't have to impact youth sports. We don't have to, getting in to read it will be easy. It's not in an area where, you know, it's generally locked up. So we'd have to work with them 
every year to unlock something and let them in. So really it would be those kind of uh, logistical challenges would, would be the only real downside, Maureen, to, to having this in place. I mean, if this was a, a well where somebody was just kind of haphazard drilling a well and they weren't properly sealing the upper and lower aquifers or, you know, taking care of that sort of thing and having this really, you know, professionally handled and monitored, you could run into some other issues like surface contamination of the aquifer and things like that. But with, with this situation, we, we really don't have much risk at all of anything like that. So if I, from my knowledge, I thought we weren't being able to do any recharging. Is this going to be the first time where we'll actually be able to test recharging? We, in the lower, the lower aquifer, it, it's been difficult to see any real evidence of recharge because of the continual pumping of the lower aquifer. So there's like, we, we, we can't ever just say, let's just shut off all the wells for <laughs> two years and see what happens. Let's, right. let's just see how much comes back in. We, we've never been able to do that. Um, the, the speculation has been because of the thickness of the clay layers that, that there was maybe limited recharge in that lower aquifer and because it has continually declined. Um, but some of the more recent data through some of the research projects that PBAC has been conducting indicates that there, there probably is, that the water's a little bit younger than we had thought and younger moving from east to west. And so, so this will be really interesting for us to try and get a better handle on, on what might be coming in. It's an interesting thought. I'd never thought of water as old and young. Yeah. So, um, but that's a new thought for me. Okay, and there's no danger for, um, the well or the testing being anywhere close to the park where kids could hurt themselves or do anything no this is this is over in an area where we've already got it's it's a kind of a landscape area we have a fire hydrant there will does the well will come up out of the ground two feet and so there'll be basically a, a metal tube that comes out of the ground two feet high that will be delineated and make sure that through landscaping and delineation it's not something someone's running into or tripping over well, i think it's pretty unanimous that we're all pretty excited about it so is it fair to say that we can put this on the regular agenda, but unanimously approve of it? Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leita County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazardous Mitigation Plan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I have before you today a document that has um, been developed through um, several different variations of an old plan which was actually called the 2011 Latah County Hazardous, Hazardous All Hazard Mitigation Plan. Um, Latah County as our county seat is responsible <coughs> for managing the emergency hazard mitigation plan for the, all of Latah County. So they engaged all of the smaller communities within the county um, to be included in this plan. So there's been several meetings actually that have been taking place since about 2017 and um, the University of Idaho was selected to work with the county to um, rewrite this plan through a grant that was provided through FEMA. However, there was some transition and so the plan got kind of set back a couple of times that's supposed to be updated every five years. So. We're a little late in making this happen, but FEMA did grant an extension so that projects could move forward. So what you have before you today is the, the actual Latah County multi-jurisdictional hazardous mitigation plan. Um, just to note, there, there will be a separate fire plan that's coming forward that Brian is working on with, um, um, with other groups within the community and the county. They just, it's a separate plan now than, um, and I think it's going to be more of an emergency type plan with police and fire in it. So um, the inclusion of information that impacts Moscow is we have demographical information that was pulled from the last census and, and current information that was available through Department of Commerce and the Census Bureau. Um, I think James Fry, who's here today, and Brian um, Nickerson and myself, I'm not sure if Tyler, uh, there's several of us that went to the planning meetings for this document throughout its development. Um, back in February, actually, of 2023, or 2020, um, Bill Belknap uh, brought before you a list of projects that we were requesting to be included in the plan. And um, at that time, um, 
city council approved those, the public works committee and the city council approved those projects. And if you'll note, they're, they're actually listed in the plan as had been presented to the council. I think they start on page 95 in this new agreement. Additional information regarding the city of Moscow is on page 66 through 72 of the document. And it really talks about uh, what resources we have avail available and how the city is kind of um, set up to deal with hazard mitigation or risk assessments. And so today what we're looking at is um, in your packet, um, there was a letter from uh, FEMA who has re reviewed and approved the plan. And um, as I said in my staff report, we um, have several of our projects in here. And just for an example, um, and it was kind of ironic, I noticed today that um, on the same day that um, Bill Belknap presented our list of projects to you back in February of 2020, we also presented to you that day was the um, FEMA Advanced Assistance Paradise Creek Flood Mitigation Study agreement and so that is actually a project that was listed a little more vaguely than it's described here in the prior plan and had that project not been listed in that plan as a flood mitigation project we wouldn't have been able to apply for that grant so that's an example of what we're looking at and um, the city will be receiving a little over three hundred thousand dollars for the study and the recommendations for the flood hazard mitigation so I think um, I won't go over the project list again. You guys have seen it and you've approved it. So what we're looking at today then, um, FEMA's process is that each city needs to adopt and support the plan. And one of the things that wasn't in the staff report but was included in your package was a, res a draft resolution that FEMA needs us to provide to Lata County to move forward so that we would be eligible for current and future funding resources. So um, my recommendation in the, the um, staff report asked for um, recommendation support and facilitation of the plan and the wording should have said through approval of the attached resolution. So we'll update that for mm -hmm. um, the city council packet. Um, I'll answer any questions you may have regarding the report, the process, the projects, however I can assist. And any questions? All right, any questions? Well, Lisa, you covered all my questions in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Great. Looks great. Thank you for all the work. And You're thank welcome. you for everybody else who participated in all the work. Yep. So, so uh, again, I think the issue is this goes on the regular agenda and um, it has approval of everybody on. We're getting an extensive uh, agenda for April. So it being non-controversial, is it? Does it need to be on the regular agenda or can it go on the consent agenda? Well, if it's a resolution, I think it needs to go on the regular. Resolutions can go on the consent agenda. Oh, they can? Ordinances can. cannot. Oh. I'm happy with that because I don't see anything terribly controversial here. We didn't have any questions for you. I mean, we approved it in February, so it just seems like our stuff got in there. And do you have any questions or any objection to it going on the consent agenda? That seems fitting. Okay, unanimously from the... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any reports from the staff? No staff reports today. Okay. Uh, adjourn? Any objection to adjourning? Anne, let's go. Bye. Adjourned. Never objections to adjourn. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but at least you check it out. The public can breathe easier once again. <laughs>